Yeah, I, I think I know that the, the, there is a right answer to this, yes, but um, how long we take to get there might depend on whether we get to some really big issues today, and like getting an LTP through. So far away. Um, on the um, legal question, just so that I'm in absolutely no doubt whatsoever as to what risk there might be if we were to um, remove this from the um, We've been told that the hearing shouldn't take into account the funding implications, so that actually separates those two issues, the, the hearing outcome and the funding, two separate issues not linked or they shouldn't be linked. Um, you talked about the risk of a judicial review. Presumably that risk would only come from a decision being made improperly, not on the um, basis of, of sound advice and proper consideration and so on, or is there something else that would give rise to um, the risk of judicial review or any greater risk to this decision than any other? Does, does, does anyone want to move an amendment to the LTP based on the advice that we've received so far? What, what do you want to move? Yeah, what's up there? Move, Yani. Does, is, it, is there a seconder? No, well, I, I don't. I can't. I don't have the right to just put it to a vote. We have to have a debate now. Uh, to, it's the Cranford Street Northern Arterial Extension and. We would have to ask the mover and the seconder. I'm sure that's. Um, I, I, I was just going to say, if I, if I can speak, um, yeah. that given on what we've heard, like. Um, rather than just be removed from the LTP, be recon so be removed from the LTP and reconsidered as part of next year's annual plan. So I think that mitigates the judicial review risk. Um, and if I just speak to this very briefly, um, A, we've got designations all across the city that we have continuously rolled over for years and years and years where we haven't actually made the roading network improvements that we took the designation for. So I don't believe that's a fair assessment of the risk at all. Um, I do understand that we're in the middle of a process, um, but actually our democratic process to set a long-term plan budget is something that I think is really valuable in a modern democracy, and I actually think that, that um, this is the proper process to discuss whether we want to fund it or not. Um, and the, the final point I'll make is just, to me this is really about priorities. It's not to say that this shouldn't happen in some time in the future, but actually what we're trying to achieve as a city is balance our finances, make smart choices, and we've made a commitment to invest in public transport and cycling and alternative methods of transport, which I strongly support. So I can't see the sense in building more motorways or uh, accessories to motorways to encourage more use of the motor vehicle, while at the same time trying to encourage people into those other means. And if you think of what we're doing in the central city, um, it's almost the complete opposite to this. So I think actually, um, let's try those alternative methods first and see what behaviour change that can lead to. Uh, we, given our financial constraint, I don't believe we can afford to do it at the moment. Uh, and finally, I, I think the risk is actually very limited, um, and uh, I think this is just part of our normal long-term plan process, and we should feel entirely comfortable making decisions around how we choose to spend money or not. And the 
Final, final point is if we're concerned about the impacts on our roading network, let's stop putting traffic lights in and Martians Road and clogging up the system. Is there anyone who wants to speak on the other side of that debate? Um, Ali? I, um, I can't support this this afternoon. I think that the issue is more related to what is happening from Cranford and downstream of Cranford. Uh, and there are other issues that we need to talk about and focus on without going back and basically chucking away all the stuff that's gone into this so far. Uh, I don't see in a budget sense why this is or how this makes any difference. I'm concerned that we're in the middle of a process at the moment with the hearings panel. We need to uh, let that do its thing. Um, but I think that what our public and what our ward is telling us is that they are concerned about issues such as what happens to the traffic when they hit in us. Uh, where is the traffic going to, to run to? Why have we not looked at Barbados and the other one ways into town as a, as a way to feed traffic away from what is an area full of families, shops, uh, schools, kids? It's just those are the issues that we need to focus on and I think that it isn't uh, clear and it's not fair to turn this into an argument about funding for this um, particular part of the scheme. We need to let this go through and then address these other issues um, after um, this has gone through today. I've voted against this consistently for quite a lot of years, um, but I appreciate that we're in the middle of a hearing. Um, I'm not in favour of the, the work, but I wonder if we couldn't as a backstop to this one, um, have something like that funding for the Northern Artery will be reconsidered after the hearing and before any contractual agreements are entered into. It sounds like preemptive though, not it? Well, no, I'm just suggesting we reconsider it. I'm not predicting the outcome, but I would like to recon like us to reconsider the whole is issue. Is this is not the, this is not the, I mean, the truth is, is that we get to make a decision on the project when the commissioner okay. so makes So we will anyway. Yeah. So okay. we will anyway, so it's not necessary. It's so not about funding, actually, that's what I was I know. It's about the design and how this is going to work. We need the money there, this does need to be done, you know, but. I'd rather the money went into public transport. Anyway, so um, I will, um, So removed from the LTP and reconsidered as part of next year's annual plan. Yeah, and put the word extension between arterial and four. Right, so, um, and can, um, okay, so uh, I think we'll just have the, can we have the buttons up for people who are in favour to press? Yeah. Um, People in favour press yes, and people opposed press no. So that is um, carried. Thank you very much. All right. Um, all right, the next item is the um, Linwood Wollston pool. Oh, actually, no, we'll, we'll just deal with all of the others um, as one sort of kind of lump sum. So the, the, um, if you go to the top of what I provided you with is the following proposals be referred to the Chief Executive for prioritisation action within existing budgets, funding for the coastal pathway, increased levels of maintenance for Esplanade and street cleaning, include Bradshaw Terrace, Rickett and the Streets Renewals Programme, prioritisation of foot repair for access to schools and community flooding at Templeton, um, bus shelters, um, and then and those to be reported back to council by the end of August about you know th those issues, and that the chief executive separately report on um, the ICT budget as part of Great for Christchurch, the requirements of the community house to be assessed for future funding allocation analysis of existing master plans in order to ensure we have the best model going forward. 
and that the um, proposal to inflation adjust community funding per year to be consistent with the approach taken with CDC and CTT funding provisions be referred to the Working Party on Community Funding. And if we, if I move that as one major recommendation, and do I have a seconder for that, Andrew? So, um, Yanni? Amendment to where it says community house. The, the staff advice is that we should probably just call it a community hub within the central city, so rather than a specific um, space. Um, and it wasn't against future, just future funding allocation, it was actually um, how it could happen. So it may be it's the old ARD building with Sarah, or it might be above the bus interchange, but it but wasn't just about community funding. house already exists. Yeah, I know. But the idea was that we would look at a, some sort of central community hub. What we heard from submitters and the reason they brought forward was that they were really concerned about the lack of affordable community space in the central city, um, and that's why I was trying to address. So okay. I'm happy for the chief executive to report. The back requirements of community um, organisations for um, a commu the requirements of a community hub, the requirements of a community hub in the CBD. How about that? So. If you change um, the requirements of community house to be assessed, if you just change it, the requirements of a community house, uh, a community hub in the CBD, in the CBD, to be assessed for future funding allocation. I mean, we don't know what needs to be allocated for that, so it's just getting a report on it. Um, I understood from some of the staff comments that the the community hub shouldn't necessarily be in the CC no, I know. CBD. So, but that's what Yanni's moving, is it for it to be in the CBD. So why don't we just put the requirements of community organisations to be assessed for future funding allocation? Because for affordable uh, space. For affordable space, yeah. Right. That will have enough scope to look at the options. In fact, we could, we could even, even refer that to the, um, to the community funding working group. Yeah, it is, I suppose. Yeah, but anyway. So um, but we've given a bit, a bit of extra time for that. So I'll just put that as a, a group of amendments. Um, yeah, but it's not in the CBD anymore. So it's just the requirements of community organisations for, a sport of, uh, for affordable space to be assessed for future funding allocation. I'll see if I would just like to comment on this. Yeah. Sorry, I, I do need to point out that these are increased levels of service and as such they will increase costs. So um, it is not possible to write a resolution to do a reprioritisation that won't impact upon no, the current... No, 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 it's to get her to report to us... If we go up to the top, then can we change... ...about prioritisation or action within existing budgets. In that case, the resolution is either confusing or I'm confused, which is quite possible. No, well, I could be, you know, If, if it we could is go possible. to the top of the resolution yeah. then... That the following proposals be referred to the Chief Executive for prioritisation action within existing budgets. So that's the sentence that needs to change because those activities below it in some instances are increases to levels of service. Yes. And, and the reprioritisation would mean that we'd have to reduce other things that we've promised to the community and to council. Yeah, yeah and reported back to council by the end of August. So it's not for her to prioritise. It's for her to take action where things can be quickly done and not not bothered about, you know. But if also we could make to prioritise. In the, in the okay, sentence, yeah, for a report on okay. prioritisation. And and report back to council on any prioritisation matters by the end of August. Fantastic. Thank you. But I, I want yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because it's within existing budgets. If people want to do it. Because we, I mean, we've we've got that whole prioritisation focus ahead of us, and and that will free up money, and it will mean that we get to look at rates again, and it will mean that we get to look at um, different things again. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that's that's right. And um, can you take out that that bottom? and report back to council by the end of August. Yep, take that one out. And that the Chief Executive separately report on. I just wonder if we could put a change in the wording for the top, uh, with the coastal pathway, the yep. second bullet point. 
just that really it's not, it, while the, the piece around the, um, the Crosses Dyers Road, in fact that is the, the challenge which is virtually um, unachievable. But if in fact we tie it into the Estuary Edge Master Plan project, in fact that would be a way around the coast to achieve this pathway. Well, so could I've we got, change the, the, I've got the master plans down uh, as a separate one, which is an analysis of existing master plans in order to ensure that we have the best model going forward, so future plans from form. But, I is mean, because mm. I, I kind of just grouped all of the master plan stuff into there. Could, so, um, I, gave, I gave the staff a rewording of, of an amendment I was going to put, and it's an, it does not increase the funding at all. Yeah. Um, if perhaps we could find that just to, as an amendment. I just really want to make sure this is included in the bunch, that's all. And it's, it's certainly within the existing funding. That the resolve that is part of the Estuary Edge Master Plan project prior is going to... Uh, so does that have an impact on... Um, okay. Peter, is that all right? That the council resolved that as part of the Estuary Edge Master Plan project starting July 2015 for 18 months, priority is given to identify. Yep, okay. There you are. So let's just put this one separately. So that's moved uh, Phil Clearwater, seconded David East. <laughs> right, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. And then we'll go back to the, the full grouping and take that first. Um, sentence out, funding for the coastal pathway, well not the first sentence, the first bullet point, and now we will put that entire motion, all those in favour say aye. aye, those opposed say no, that's carried, and then we've got the um, Linwood Wollstone pool. Can you, Peter, tell us what the impact is on rates for moving it forward into the 16-17 year? In year 1.03%, in year 2.14%. But, sorry, how does it affect the first year if um, it's not till 16, 17? So, uh, so I'm talking about um, first year with it, sorry. Okay. The, the first year of the LTP. So it's so point... The impact of the first year is 0 0.03, second year 0.14, third year 0.36. Uh, and of course it is a bring forward, so it's a, it's a case of um, negative in the years after that. Being a recreational facility, it does have operational cost attached with it, and that operational cost is obviously brought forward as a permanent difference rather than just a ton. So overall that's around uh, just over half a percent over the three years. Okay. Right, so um, Yani, you're moving that, and who's seconding that? Paul? But can I just check from staff, like we put 15 million new money on budget, that's got less rate impact than this. a lot of the difference uh, in the timing of when it's happening as well versus the impact was 0.2 over those four to five years. It's only been brought forward a few years, but okay. uh, I just think it's really important to get things happening in this area. Um, and most projects that we do, capital projects, are spread over um, two years um, just for the nature of. The, the money in terms of doing the design work. So um, I'm relatively flexible about how much is in that first year, but I think that the intent was to actually signal some funding to get the work started. Um, so, um, yeah, the, to me, this really came about from that um, submission from the Limwood cluster of schools, where we heard some pretty alarming statistics around the hardship that those schools were facing. They've had an increase in... Um, their decile ranking, which has effectively meant um, cuts to their funding. They've lost a lot of uh, uh, facilities in, in that area, um, and a number of schools have, have closed. So you've got uh, a number of things happening in that wider area, 
and the need for a pool has been well established through previous aquatic facilities uh, plans and reviews. So I think given the delays to the Metro Sports facility, um, and I was hoping that this would pretty much be cost neutral because that facility is going out to 2020, so this really was aligned to um, capture some of that money that we would have spent in those years by bringing forward and actually doing this pool um, so that we could get an aquatic facility that's, uh, you know, I think going to be recreation centre that's going to be well, well used, well needed, um, and deals with uh, identified community needs. So uh, if you compare this to the Metro Sports delay, it should be cost neutral, I would have thought, because we'd already allocated money for it to be on budget. Um, I'm still trying to understand why the DCs is actually, you know, 15 million of new money comes at a, a, a lower rates impact than bringing forward by a year um, an existing project um, that we already have money on budget for. I don't think the operational cost would be that that massive. Um, and the final point I'll make is just, um, you know, there there is something happening in terms of people's uh, psychosocial wellbeing in our city. One of the really alarming statistics has been um, through the health department, we're hearing about the huge increases in the number of children and young people uh, being admitted to inpatients and also into the mental health wards. So, you know, there, there's a huge issue facing uh, areas of our city, and I actually think having these community facilities like swimming pools and, and libraries, as, as we're also doing, are incredibly important to uh, giving some of these communities hope um, for things to do rather than being left with feeling um, that things aren't going as, as well as they should. And again, we've lost Centennial, the Metro's been delayed. Uh, I think it's really important that we get this facility open. I would hope by bringing it forward, we can get synergy with the other aquatic facilities projects so that we actually utilise doing a number at the same time as a cost saving. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I thought it was only being brought forward a year. No, it's just been brought forward um, from 21 and 22 at the moment. Oh. As part of the capital review that we went through from the draft LTP, we pushed it out. Um, now we're talking about bringing it back. Um, and Yanni, I can probably help with the... Uh, Councillor Johan, sorry. Help with the difference between DC and, and this. As well as operational, you'll recall that uh, Mr Teeman talked about the net impact of the rates um, and there was the... Uh, the to take into account. Okay, so, um, all right, so I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Let's carry.